Hello and welcome to Slinky's Riven Reviews. Since I recently hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, I thought it would be a great idea to do something very special and that's what we're going to do today. So, as you can probably tell from the title of this video and the weapon I'm holding in my Limbo's hands right now, we're going to do a comb Riven review or more a comb Riven documentary. Why you ask documentary? Well, as you can see right here, um, I got a couple comb ribbons, um, 18 to be exact, 17 are listed here, 18th one is a secret that I will reveal at the end of this video, but I have pretty much 18 comb ribbons that are all very 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 good but different and I'm going to compare them today. So this is a very big endeavor, I'm putting a lot of effort in into making this, so I hope it will be very teaching and overviewing for all of you. So since we're comparing so many different things, we gotta get a little bit of rules in there. So how are we going to compare all of these ribbons? Well, basically we're gonna test against three different types of enemies. Corrupted heavy gunners, corrupted bombards, and Drakkar Manic Bombards as you are used to it from my other videos. But we're going to do it in a very special and uniformed way. First of all, we, we're using Limbo, so all of them are lined up, so we can get very consistent punch-through headshots over all of them. I'll put down the Cataclysm, then I'm going to spawn the enemies in, like this. So they, they will all be lined up, not getting n knocked around from the Cataclysm cast. And now, what we're going to do is... um. You see this line here? We we'll basically use this line as our starting point. Line up the rope perfectly, then freeze all the enemies. And then start shooting. And we're gonna do that for every single one of these ribbons. So we can get a very uniform overview over their performance. In addition to that, we gotta set a very set baseline for how our builds are going to be, so we have a pretty adequate comparison. We're giving ourselves the baseline of always using Tainted Shell on all the builds, so the spread is reduced to absolutely zero. As you can see here, when I'm shooting the wall, it will have pretty much pinpoint accuracy, even over a little bit longer ranges which will result in pretty much perfect headshot accuracy, with combs spread normally being very, very rough. When you're shooting enemies with the comb, you usually want to move forward, so more of your pellets actually hit the enemies. But with Tainted Shell, you really don't need to do that, so we can save us this variable of moving forward differently over the different tests. So we have the uniformity there. We're also going to double stack fire rate on all of them, basically running shotgun spas and frail momentum. If the Riven doesn't have fire rate, and just running shotgun spas and the Riven for fire rate if the Riven does have fire rate. There's one exception to this, but I'll go into that later. All right, let's go into the different Rivens I have and how I'm going to build them in this video. So we're going to start out with the good old legendary comb status chance damage multi-shot with a harmless negative. I have this one right here, which I will mod with the required mods. I said earlier, Tainted Shell, the two fire rate mods, 360, 60 mods to achieve the legendary 100% status chance and prime charge shell. I'm dropping damage at multi shot here because the build is otherwise way too tight for that. But luckily, we have damage at multi shot here, which are both higher than their respected mod values, so we can pretty much change the mods out. Then I have this one, which is status chance multi shot damage minus slash, which is pretty much the exact same thing but it also removes all the slash from here, so the weapon will pretty much only proc corrosive and a little bit of cold and just this little bit of IPS that is still left. So we can compare how status chance damage multi-shot performs differently if you remove the slash or if you don't. Build is otherwise identical. I also made this other build for a comparison I want to do later, which completely removes fire rate altogether and replaces it with health chamber 
and prime point blank to have the highest single shot damage so we can compare in how little ammo specific ribbons can kill a row of the respected enemies and compare what their just raw shot power might actually be. I also had some food for thought where I am going to run, uh, I'm going to try a viral slash full status build on this where I pretty much remove all the extra elemental we don't need. We're just going to go for viral and I'm also going to put heat in here because heat benefits from enemies having reduced health and we're pretty much replacing health chamber again putting our double fire rate mods back over here. So we have fire rate to magazine comparison between all the other ribbons. What I have now here are combs I wanna call hybrid combs that have full status on them and also fire rate. This one has minus 100% ammo max, which doesn't really matter for the simulacrum because when you equip a weapon and then put on a ribbon that reduces its ammo maximum, it will still stay at the initial ammo maximum you had, but you won't be able to regain that ammo maximum later. But for our test purposes, the minus ammo maximum is just representative of pretty much a harmless negative. With this, I'm just running 360s again to get to this 100% status chance. I'm dropping damage from multi-shot here because our Riven are already has damage and we have pretty high slot scarcity here. And prime charge shell to put our corrosive weight and corrosive damage way higher. The other quote-unquote hybrid comb I have is this comb with fire rate multi-shot status chance. It has multi-shot instead of damage and also minus slash. So what we're going to do with this one is drop health chamber for Pine barn plank again to get, had, have this multiplier saturated. Rest of the build stays pretty much the same. Let's swap over to my six former comb so I can show you my fire rate damage multi-shot combs. I have this one with plus recoil, which will pretty much just rep represent any harmless negative. I'm gonna run the regular since this already has fire rate. I'm just gonna run shotgun spas. 260s this time, so we actually won't hit 100% status chance. Tainted shell to reduce the spread and also prime point blank and health chamber to get more damage at multi-shot and prime charge shell for more elemental damage. I also have this other fiery damage multi-shot comb, but this time with negative slash. It's pretty much the same, just with all the slash removed from the weapon. Build stays the same, that's pretty much it. Going back to my 7 former comb, now we're looking at my damage multi crit chance combs. This one has minus infested, obviously representing harmless negative. I'm just going to run 260s, which doesn't allow it to go 100% status, but we'll see how that works out later. Tainted Shell obviously adding primed ravage. The crit multiplier gets bumped up and we can capitalize on crit headshots that are made easier to get with the Tainted Shell and Prime Charge Shell again for a lot more elemental damage. Now my other damage multi-shot crit chance comb, this one is minus slash again. Build stays the same, but slash damage is removed. I also have two more builds. This one is for the minus slash one, where I don't run any fire rate, so we can compare it later on the ammo efficiency test. And this one is a very interesting one. I got requested a lot, actually. It's a viral hunter munitions comb, not using the minus slash one here, because we are still happy about the occasional slash procs that don't overlap with hunter munitions, because you won't get two procs at once, but you still get a little bit more with this. And also we really don't need to proc that much viral. And since the comb has so many pellets already, we can just use the one that is minus infested. It's the general build again, just with the crit chance from the Riven, Primed Ravage, and we're dropping damage at multi-shot mods to add more fire rate onto this. Now we have this singular one. I don't have a non-minus slash one for this. This is just a comb damage multi-shot, which gives us very high multi-shot and very high damage numbers which is pretty much identical to the build of the crit ones, with the difference that I'm swapping out Primed Ravage again for Prime Point Blank, so we have even more damage. I also made this different build with the same Riven on my 6th for my comb, which doesn't run any fire rate at all, 
so I can compare it later in the ammo efficiency comparison. It pretty much is just the same but with the fire rate dropped for also health chamber and contagious spread. Now I have this multi-shot fire rate negative slash com which basically just increases the fire rate by a whole lot and also adds some multi-shot so I'm just gonna run shotgun spas in addition and the rest is just the usual. Now I have three different chrome ribbons that have the additional element of toxin on there. Electricity would do pretty much the same but we have toxin here because toxin is cool and all. This one is toxin fire rate damage plus recall and we're pretty much just gonna run this standard 260 build with one added fire rate mod, point blank health chamber and prime charge shell again. We also have this fire rate damage toxin minus slash one which is pretty much the same again but it also removes the slash of the weapon and we also have this toxin fire rate multi shot minus slash one which just swaps damage for multi shot so we can compare even further what would be better to have in that specific slot on your oven. Now for something interesting I have two comb ribbons for you that have an off element of the usual corrosive build. The ribbons have cold on them. Why cold you may ask? Well cold really isn't the worst of an element you can have on a comb. It pretty much gives you a little bit more damage towards alloy armor before it's gone and it also slows down enemies. Cold procs would also increase slash tick duration, but since our weapons don't have any slash on them, that isn't really given anymore, but will what this can do. I also have the exact same ribbon again with multi shot instead of damage, so we can compare which one is better. Now for the slinky favorite, the gas build, we have a damage status chance toxin ribbon, so we can build a very decent gas build out of this. We'll see how this performs in the end. We're not running point blank because we have damage on our ribbon already. Sadly, this build in general is very, very tight because we need the 100% status chance to get as many gas procs as possible. We're gonna run 360s and no 90 because sadly there really isn't any slot room for it. We still need the slot to put in cleanse corrupted because gas gets multiplied multiple times by the different bane mod variants. So this is pretty much the best build I was able to come up with. As you can see, I'm not double stacking fire rate here because the build really can't work without having any of these mods in. So I really needed to opt out for just single stacking fire rate with tainted shell still to make this work. So this is the one exception where I don't double stack fire rate on the weapon itself. Obviously, the cleanse corrupted will be swapped out to cleanse of Grenier while testing against the Drakkar Manic Bombards. Alright, that's pretty much it what I'm going to do for the introduction for the comb ribbons I'm going to show you in the simulacrum here besides the mystery comb I'm going to unveil in the end. So let's get into the testing and see what all these spicy ribbons can do and how they compare to each other.
All right, now it's time for the Eidolon Kiln. I'm running Toxin Chroma, so I'm reloading faster. So the reload isn't as bad on the Kiln. I'm also running the Crit Chance Electric Multishot plus Recall Chrome Riven with just a general build that's very set on Fire Aid with Tainted Shell and no base damage because I'm running Chroma. Putting on Radiation and Prime Dravage for more crit damage. I have these three comb, uh, comb weapons, which I pretty much just crafted for the video itself. I'm just using a Concealed Explosives Hiku Prime to damage myself, so I can get my damage bonus from Chroma up. And I'm using basically just full attack speed Sarpa with Shattering Impact to strip the armor of the Eidolon a little bit, but not fully. For my companion, I'm using Helios Prime with basically just a survivability build, not even giving it the ability to shoot. And for my weapon, I'm using any weapon with just all the Vigilante mods on there, so I'm getting a lot of base crit chance and chance to enhance my crits on my calm. So I deal more damage to the Eidolon. Now for the Eidolon fight itself, I got a lure beforehand and now I'm going to strip all the armor of it with my Sarpar. Well, not all of it, but almost all of it, so I still get the radiation bonus damage on it. And now it's time to strip down the shields. Here we go. Let's see how much damage the comb will do to one of its limbs. First of all, gotta get that buff up. And let's deal some damage. Well, th that was rather surprisingly quick for a comb. I, I might say. Let's go to the second limp, and it's pretty much just the same. Just aim at the limp, and shoot, and it's gone very, very fast. Now for the third one, oops. Here we go. Now the fourth limb. Oops. <laughs> God damn it. Let's get that limb and got it. I'm obviously also running Arcane Tempo so my comb gets more fire aid on crit chance. Let's see uh, how fast I can kill the final stage of this terror list. If I could aim, this would be a little bit better. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Yeah, Eidolon Comb is surprisingly potent. It obviously isn't very comparable to, like, perfectly riven modded snipers, but it still gets its job done quite well. Especially if we, I had like a vault shield in the end to deal more damage towards the body itself. The thing with the comb also is that you can use it pretty pretty well to actually semi AFK from the index solo or in the squad. So um, what you want to do is um, you have your comb 
Like, I, I, I might take this fire rate damage multi shot minus slash one, for example, and you pretty much just want to triple stack fire rate on it. You're hoping for, to have fire rate on your Riven, and you also want to add two more fire rate mods. The rest is pretty much just raw radiation damage if you're n not having one, uh, like, status chance on your Riven. I'm just running raw radiation damage because in the index, the tankiest enemies are the robotic ones that have actually armor. And since they have alloy armor, which is weak against radiation, we can just run as much radiation as possible to fight through their armor straight up in, instead of removing it. Um, usually you would want to run the Heat 90 mod in this slot, but I've sadly formatted this incorrectly for this Revenant setup. So I gotta live with Shellshock in here. If you have a status riven like this one with fire rate status chance and damage for example or or if you have another riven like the gas riven I've shown you earlier the hexatoxiata one um, you can either opt for running corrosive so you strip the robotic armored targets instead of just forcing through their armor with radiation, or you could opt for running gas instead. Um, how is this gonna help you in Index? Well, we have this wonderful frame called Excalibur Umbra. His passive ability is that he will pop out as a specter when you go into your operator, and he'll just shoot for you. And since specters have perfect aim, this synergizes very well with the comb since it would will also completely negate any spread or fall off we would have normally for our focus tree I would recommend Yunairu because Yunairu has a this little like ability called void shadow which will basically make you and your umbra invisible while you're in void mode, which is pretty useful in very tight situations or in general if you just don't want to get targeted by your enemies. For operator setup, I pretty much just run any amp you want. It doesn't really matter since you're probably never going to use it. Same with the amp arcane, but I'm running one lockdown so I can lock down enemies in case something might get tight. And I'm running Magus Elevate, so I can heal my Umbra Spectre very easily with just popping in and out of my Operator. On my Umbra, I'm pretty much just running full, like, survivability mods and narrow-minded, so enemies need to get really, really close to force him to use abilities, and most of the time, they will never get this close. So let me demonstrate this really quick, starting one round of Index high risk in invite only so I'm just going to go in solo so this is one of the two old maps I'll show you the positions for the other maps later but let me give you the general idea of what you want to do so basically you want to go to the enemy side of the map where you bank your points and then find one of these crates where you won't, where your Umbra won't walk away, just pop into your frame and go invisible. And pretty much what you want to do is you want to block the spawns efficiency efficiently, so the enemies will pretty much just spawn in very close vicinity to the actual point drop-off point. So your AI players you have in your squad are able to pick the points up easily and put them into the drop-off location even though they are very very challenged with their actual intelligence when you're in this point in this position you can pretty much just stand here as long as you're looking in this way so you're blocking the spawns from the left side and from the middle only enemies from the right side will spawn You'll, you can just sit here and wait for your, AI, for your AI players to put in the points and make you win the round. Depending on how good your Riven is, you can go around 5 to 6 rounds solo. 
before you need to restart. If it gets, if you realize that it gets too slow for you, um, sh you should probably opt for leaving and resetting earlier. Um, one thing that can happen is you can get really unlucky with how your AI players uh, decide to put in the points. So as you can see right now, I have zero points currently cashed in and my timer is slowly ticking down. If that happens when you're like on your first round getting really low on time, you might need to go and collect points yourself and put them in to get the timer back up. But after if you've done that once, or one of your bodies banked once, with a lot of points, you sh usually should be very set in terms of time. Just as a quick reminder, this is also a great way to farm spare mods for transmutation. You can just occasionally go out and go grab all the spare mods that have been dropped by the enemies. Luckily with this, since the enemy spawns are so concentrated, all the mods will pretty much just be piled up. As you can see, this was pretty much completed effortlessly. Okay, this is the new map. Let me show you where the location you can sit in is here. So, first of all, you want to go just cross everything here and move to the other side of the map where the enemy's places are. And as you can see, there is this little box here. So you just go on top of here, spawn this and look over here so you block the spawns from the right side and this corridor over there. So ideally the enemies should just spawn left and behind you. So you can just sit here and occasionally go invisible. You can also opt just to look in the different direction depending on what your personal preference is. You can also opt to just look at the wall itself, so enemies c could spawn from both sides. But as I found it, blocking one side is better, so your AI characters have an easier way of taking up all the points that are currently lying down, and don't need to choose between two sides to get the points in there. Alright, so let's do the conclusion now. Uh, what I did was I made a couple different spreadsheets uh, in which I listed the combs by the amount of frames it takes to kill the specific enemies. So let, let's look at the one that compares the corrupted heavy gunners right now. As you can see the multi-shot fire at minus slash one won out by one frame over damage multi-fire at minus slash which might be due to variance in how good the enemies got hit or in with how consistent the procs were onto these. Well, um, the non-status ones won out on these because the status ones pretty much stripped all their armor instantly. So the corrupted heavy gunners lost their damage bonus that their ferrite armor has against corrosive, which is commonly known as overstripping. I usually try to prevent overstripping as much as possible with my builds, but that's still how it be so you lose damage due to running 100% status as well because you gotta run 360-60s. As you can see the minus slash damage multi-fire rate pulls up right ahead over the damage multi-fire rate plus recoil one which is expected because the minus slash one gets a, a, a little bit more corrosive procs faster but the variance there isn't that big actually. Surprisingly the fire rate cold multi-shot minus slash one performed very well against these even better than the fire rate toxin multi-shot one but that also might be due to variance. You can see like the general trend here pretty well that against corrupted heavy gunners the status ones are a little bit worse. It at least at that level. Interesting is the damage multi minus slash one, which probably didn't perform as well b due to uh, not having fire rate on it, but it got outperformed by the CC damage multi minus infested because headshots give a little bit more damage when you crit. The CC damage multi minus slash one performed a little bit worse, I expect, because 
you're actually losing a little bit of damage due to the minus slash, so your headshots don't deal that much more damage. Down there you can obviously see my uh, the other builds I did, which aren't really comparable to the other ones. Um, I have a Viral Hunter Munitions one on the damage multi CC minus infested one, uh, which performed a lot better than the Viral Slash one on the full status one, so don't run Viral Slash on your combs, kids. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like. The Viral Slash full status one performed even worse than the damage multi-status minus slash one without fire rate. Like, when it comes to the no fire rate ribbons, the damage multi-status minus slash one just pulled ahead out of all of them. So status comb is actually pretty good if you want to save ammo. Like, it pulled ahead by, like, quite a lot of frames. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about the corrupted heavy gunner part. The corrupted bombard part looks very similar w with the difference that the fire rate multi status minus slash one actually outperformed the damage multi fire rate on that one because it actually benefits you to strip armor as fast as possible against corrupted bombards because they don't have any elemental weakness against corrosive. So that one won out. Other than that, damage multi fire rate minus slash still keeps being the strong competitor. Now also the fire rate toxin multi shot minus slash one sits a little bit higher in the general picture because that's still a very very nice ribbon even though prime charge shell exists. The status combs pulled up ahead more now because as I said stripping armor is a lot more relevant now. When it comes to the, the viral slash viral hunter munitions builds they're obviously very bad in comparison. Almost as bad as the non fire rate ones. Oh I forgot to mention that um, the damage toxin status minus slash is obviously the gas build, which doesn't really like look very good on here, but you gotta take into account that I'm only running one fire rate mod on that one due to slot scarcity, and also it killed all eight of them in the same time that the other ones took to kill four of them. So that's actually, when you compare the frames, quite good especially since the enemies have like full armor like comparing the best performing combs right now to that one it, it's not even three times slower now imagine the enemies having like less armor yeah that's still a very very nice thing now to the dracarmanic bombards it's pretty much the same as with the normal bombards with the fire rate multi status minus slash one now performing a little bit worse because the enemies have so much health that at some point stripping more armor off that health isn't really of any relevancy even if it makes you not deal less damage as with the corrupted heavy gunners. So the damage multi fire rate minus slash one pulls ahead again. But other than that everything is pretty much almost identical with the gas one just being a little bit worse in the big picture because enemies have so much health so it takes quite a little bit longer to kill them on the contrary. Now um, I also made this spreadsheet which compares all of them on like an average basis. I pretty much added up all the frames that we have from the Corrupted Heavy Gunners, the Corrupted Bombards and the Dracarmanic Bombards and divided them by three so I get the average number of frames to kill any one of these enemies, which gives a pretty good representation of what those combs can do on, on, in like a bigger picture when compared to pretty much all enemy types that are of relevance. And you can see that the damage multi fire rate minus slash run really, really pretty much wins out over all other combs, like shortly followed by the fire rate toxin multi shot minus slash one. Which in my opinion is very nice because you get l actually less impact procs because your corrosive weight is higher. The fire rate multi status minus slash one is still very close. And after that you have the damage multi fire rate plus recoil one so you, you can see how much minus slash makes a difference on that one. And then it's followed by the damage multi status minus infested one. The damage multi status minus slash one is a little bit lower because you usually don't really need that much of an armor strip. But it, it, it's still like a very, very, very nice comb. Like, 
the most surprising part is the fire rate cold multi shot minus slash one to a, a couple people I would imagine because cold on your oven like bruh come on but it it's a very nice it, it's still a very nice ribbon and the cold also adds extra damage towards alloy armor which both the corrupted bombards and dracar manic bombards have uh, if we compare the viral slash and viral hunter munitions builds the viral slash one actually performed a little bit better on average but it's still not worth using in my opinion like come on now running viral slash comb like bruh come on the gas one obviously on th at the bottom but there isn't really that much variance like if you divide this by two for like all eight enemies you'll get about the same performance as the fire aid damage toxin plus recall one pretty much maybe a little bit less like it's in between those two combs um, but keep in mind that this only gets better the less armor the enemies have so if you're running at least one CP or even four this would really start outperforming er like everything else especially when you're considering groups of enemies so I hope this really gave you a better understanding about what roles are very good for comb um, the, the reason why I'm uploading this video like after such a long time is because I was waiting on some music actually because I really want to improve with all I'm doing and I decided to commission some music to put in the background but the person uh, I'm get, uh, I'm planning on getting that from really is very busy with what she does so she doesn't really have time to <laughs> like just do something for a friend real quick so maybe I'm getting that in the future like for now I'll be just using this music I hope you all fine with that so uh, I really want to thank all the people who gave me their comb ribbons so I could compare them especially since you were always obviously jumping into the dark with giving me a comb ribbon and you don't really know what it would compare to in, in contrary to the others so thank you very much for all those people all, all those people will be listed in the description if you want to buy any of these combs and um, most of all I want to thank everybody who, who has been watching and is still watching my videos and really really like the amount of posit positive feedback I'm getting really means a lot to me and it, really shows that people really are interested in the stuff I'm doing which really warms my heart so thank you very much to all of you so there isn't really a lot I can say anymore so I'll just cut to the special comb I promised you and well let, let's see you in the next video bye bruh bruh bruh